All right, we're continuing uh, talking about um, Elijah. Actually, these first few weeks, more talking just some principles we learned from his life and using some other passages to help um, to help teach us about that. But uh, today, fourth in the series on on prayers of Elijah, uh, effective prayers are expectant prayers, um, and this story this story baffles me a little bit, uh, but. I think it's amazing um, nonetheless. Again, let's start with James 5.17. Elijah was a man just like us. Uh, He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And we've been talking about what that means in in terms of truly praying earnestly because if if he was a man just like we are, uh, like we, we... have the same God that Elijah had. We have the same uh, connection with God that that Elijah had. What what does that mean for us? Well, he prayed earnestly. So the same way he prayed, the same results he got in prayer, uh, that that is available to us. All right, uh, that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Now, uh, come to the part of the story where where Elijah. Uh, had had prayed this prayer right. It didn't rain for three and a half years. Then he's on Mount Carmel. He's he's um, challenged the prophets of Baal. He has this incredible victory, uh, and then and then this this happens. He he's um, uh, praying to God for it to to rain right, and uh, so. So this part of the story a little bit baffles me. The seventh time, we talked about last week, that he kept sending a servant back uh, to see if it, if, if it was raining yet. The seventh time, the servant reported a cloud as small as a man's hand uh, is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, Hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Now, every time I read that, I just don't understand it. I'm like, why wouldn't Elijah want the rain to stop Ahab? Why wouldn't he want the rain to to just uh, trap him or to take him out? Um, I, why would he want to to throw Ahab a bone and and save his life? Basically, I I don't fully understand that uh, because Ahab certainly wouldn't have been so generous to to Elijah, right? We know that that Ahab and Eli, or Ahab and Jezebel uh, they were mortal enemies of Elijah. I mean, they, and we'll find the next chapter. In fact, they again put out a hit on him. Uh, but, but Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. <laughs> Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds. The wind rose, a heavy rain came on and Ahab rode off to Jezreel. And then the power of the Lord came upon Elijah. Uh, and following that, we find that basically the power of the Lord came upon him and he ran ahead to Jezreel and actually beat uh, beat Ahab there. I mean, that's like Flash Part One, right? Um, so, so pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, Elijah prays for rain, but he he prays with this sense of expectancy, right? Hey, go go see if you see any clouds yet. Nope, not there. Go again, go again, go again. And every time he's sending him, uh, he's probably surprised when a servant comes back and says, "I don't see any rain yet." No clouds in the sky, but Elijah's like, but I know it's coming, so hey, go back one more time. Go back. Um, I often think, what would have happened if he would have stopped on time four or five or six? Would he have, would he have seen that, that miracle, right? Um, but, he, but he kept sending them back and, and ultimately saw rain. Mark 11 uh, tells us, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Uh, Now I think that there are all kinds of scriptures throughout, uh, especially the New Testament, that say something like this. And many times uh, they are are taken out of context. Many times I think uh, people, especially from maybe a hyper-faith position, will lean into these and just say, See? 
We can have whatever we ask for. We just got to throw it out there, throw it out there uh, to God. But I believe faith is, is a belief or trust in God's abilities. Um, and, and, and I think what happens in, in truly uh, praying with expectancy um, is that, that we, find, we find as we, as we pray, and as we talked about last week, we pray with persistence, um, which means we keep on praying, right? Um, that, that we find our will being sort of conformed to God's will. We find that in prayer, it is sort of a breeding ground for us uh, to understand and know the will of God. And so I, I think in there, as we truly pray persistently, we, we, we begin to get the heart of God. And as we begin to get the heart of God, it's not, it's not hard to have an expectancy uh, about what God can do when we're praying according to His will and when we're praying with His, with His heart. Um, there's a story in Acts 12 that I think helps to lay out this idea of praying with expectancy. Um, and so I want to just share a little bit of this with you. you. You probably know the story. Peter was in prison uh, because Herod, Herod right, had, had, had killed uh, James, uh, the brother of John, it said by sword, and, and, and this, this just made the Jews really, really happy. All right, and, and so he's like, well, if they're this happy about me taking out James, uh, uh, the, the brother of John, imagine how happy they would be if I could, if I could do the same to, to Peter. So Herod arrests Peter and uh, has similar plans for him. But uh, the, 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 the church starts praying, right? And, and, and they, they really begin to intercede on, on behalf of, of Peter. Um, and, and they pray, depending on which version you, you read, uh, right? It gives us in, in verse 5, it gives us a description of their, their prayer. They prayed constantly in prayer. One version says, and they prayed hard for Peter, right? They, they prayed hard for him that God would release him. Um, but, but we know that they, they prayed with a sense of expectancy. Um, and yet there are things about this story as so many Bible stories that are just so funny, I think, when you, when you read them, um, and you sort of see the way the, the story, God bless you, the way the story un, unfolds. So, uh, so they begin to pray for Peter, um, and, and God, God does this incredible, incredible miracle where he sends an angel of the Lord into prison and unlocks un, uh, Peter's chains. I don't say he unlocks them. Somehow those chains just drop off of his wrist, off his legs, right? Opens the prison doors and, uh, and, and, and frees Peter. Um, so a few things. We're going we're gonna to go through this story a little bit. Let me just give you a few points. First of all, if we want to pray with expectancy, we have to bring ourselves to a place where we can overcome unbelief. Um, here's, here's what's funny about this story of, of Peter. When, when the angel... Uh, like took the chains off and opened the doors. It says that, that Peter was a little confused. He didn't know what was going on. Uh, in fact, he thought it was just a vision, vision from the Lord. Right? He, he didn't think it was real what was, what was happening. So I think he wanted to be released. He was probably praying that the Lord would do a miracle, but even when the miracle came, he was like, eh, I'm not sure this is a real miracle. I think maybe just a vision. Right? The church we find in verse 5, was praying hard for Peter. And yet, when Peter is released, right, or, or the angel makes a way for him to, to, to uh, uh, get out of prison, he goes to the house where they're having this prayer meeting, and he knocks on the door, right? And, and this girl named Rhoda goes to the door and it says when she recognized Peter's voice, she was overjoyed. She ran back without opening the door and explained Peter's at the door. So um, we've been praying for this. It sounds like he's out there, but I'm really not sure. 
This could be some kind of joke that, that, that Herod is, is playing on us. This, this couldn't be real, could it? Uh, how many times do we pray like that? We pray and we ask God to do a miracle. We pray and we ask God to make a way where there seems to be no way. Yet at the very hint of that way being opened up for us, we begin to doubt, don't we? We're like the, the disciples, Lord, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. God, I know the answer's at the door, but I'm sort of afraid to open the door. Um, and, and this is where, where they were at. Remember, again, faith is a, a belief or a trust in God's abilities. Not our own, not what we're perceiving with our eyes, but in God's uh, abilities. Uh, there's a story of, of, that is told of Hudson Taylor, the great missionary to, to China. Um, when, he was, when he was on his first missionary uh, journey to, to China, and his uh, ship um, hit, a, hit a, a patch of, of just windless ocean, and they were just... Uh, the story's told that they were drifting towards an island that was, uh, that was known to have cannibals on it. And the, um, the, the, the captain of the ship said, uh, can you pray? Can you pray for some, some wind here? And, and Hudson Taylor said, I, I tell you what, I will pray for wind if you'll set the sails. And, and the captain said, I'm not going to set the sails. <laughs> Let's get some wind in here first, and then I'll put up the sails. I'm not going to look like a fool, right, before my crew by setting up sails when there is no wind in the air. And Hudson Taylor said, if you'll put the sails up, I'll pray for wind. But if you're not going to position yourself to receive uh, what we're praying the Lord to send, then I'm not going to pray for it. So Hudson Taylor went down into the end of the ship and uh, a little while later, there was a knock on the door and the captain said, are you still praying for wind? He said, yeah. He said, could you please stop? We got too much here. Yeah. Um, and, and so there was this idea, though. There was this idea that, that, that Hudson Taylor had when he went into prayer. He, he was going in with the belief that God was going to do what he was asking him to do. That, that the Lord was going to respond. And he had this faith. He had this faith as he, as he prayed. So I think the first thing we have to do as we come to the Lord in, in prayer, if we're going to pray like Elijah, we have to pray with a sense of expectancy. Uh, that as we do that, we overcome unbelief that is in our life, those obstacles that believe that, uh, or that don't believe that what we're praying for can or will actually actually happen. Uh, the second thing is we got to keep praying. And we talked about this last week uh, with, with persistency in prayer. Verse 5 of Acts 12 says they were in constant prayer uh, to God uh, for Peter. And uh, they, they kept praying. They kept praying. Now, we... Um, I think sometimes in the, in the church, we, we talk about praying a lot more than we actually pray. You ever been to one of those prayer meetings where you just sit back and you begin to wonder, um, are we ever going to actually start praying? Um, tradition I grew up in, they, were, they, they would have these prayer breakfasts. Can I tell you, the emphasis was a lot more on breakfast than prayer, uh, you know, and, and uh, so, so I think we're good at that sometimes in the, in the church. We're good at that as, as Christians. Um, we, we talk about praying sometimes a lot more than we actually, we actually pray. We tell people, we tell people when they say they're going through something, I'll be praying for you. Um, and, and rather than praying and fasting, we just pray really fast. Right. Um, but, but and so we 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 like the idea of praying. But let's face it, prayer is work. Prayer is work. And we're not really always committed to the idea of of, of uh, continuing in prayer. Um, Sheree was telling me yesterday that when you're out on the roads here, um, if you're if you're uh, she was giving me the rundown of walking, riding a motorbike or in a car or bus, she's like, uh, if there's ever an accident, the smaller car is always at fault, right? So 
it's good information to know, you know. Um, but I was I was thinking about this because as I was driving to to school this morning, this big bus came by me, uh, and I'm thinking, I wonder if they, you know, knock me off my bike here if. It would be their fault, really. You know, I, I wasn't too convinced that the bus driver would see it that way. Um, but, you know, these big buses, they just fly down the road here. And I'm thinking they have a lot of power. I'm pretty sure if they hit me, it's game over. Right? And so I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about this. And, and I'm, I'm wondering what would happen, though, with this big, powerful bus if maybe we just switched switch motors. Do you think that would work? Man, what, what would happen? What would happen if that big bus uh, we decided to put my motorbike motor in it? Would that work too well? What would happen if we put that that big bus motor on my motorbike? You think I go fast now? That'd be awesome, right? Uh, but but seriously, I, I think many times we want we want that those. Uh, those bus size miracles, right? But we try to get there on motorbike prayers, right? We want, we want bus size faith in our life. Like we want that kind of power. We want that kind of authority. But we try to get there, these little motorbike engines. Uh, the engine of our life spiritually is prayer. And, 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 and I believe so much, uh, that, that many of us want that, that, bus size faith with motorbike size prayers and it just won't happen. I, I encourage you uh, to let God develop you into people of prayer. But lastly, uh, we got to do something. Do something. <laughs> Peter kept on knocking and when they opened the door and saw it was him, they were astonished. Now, this is where I really wanted to give most of our time today, but it, we don't have time. So, here, here's, the, here's the bottom line. In, in America, my, my grandfather would say it like this, and this is very crude probably, but he would just say, hey, uh, pee or get off the pot. <laughs> right? Uh, and, and, and what he meant by that, at some point, you got to make a decision. You, you got to go, right? Or get out of the bathroom, right? Other people need to use it. In life, in life, when it comes to matters of faith, at some point, we have to stop praying now and we got to start acting we got to start moving now that doesn't mean that we don't move prayerfully but at some point Moses had to stop praying and had to lift up that rod if the Red Sea was going to part right at, at some point David David had to to, to 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 get off of his knees from praying and pick up a sling and a stone and begin to sling it if that giant was going to fall um, Abraham at some point had to physically move and leave the, the land of his fathers. The woman with the issue of blood at some point uh, had, to, had to stop praying and start crawling towards Jesus, right? And to touch the hem of his garment. Now, I do pray that anytime we move, we move, we move prayerfully. But my point is this, at, at some point, praying with expectancy means that, that, that we, we stop we stop asking God to do things and we start stepping out and moving towards what it is we're wanting Him to do in faith, believing, right? Like, God, you have made this promise. You have made this promise. You, you, you have put this desire in our heart. So let's start walking towards that. Let's take that step of faith, right? Peter would have never walked on water if he would have had a prayer meeting in that boat. At some point, he had to take a step out of that boat. At some point, we have to take a step of faith and we have to move. All right? We have to, we have to move. Again, that doesn't mean that we don't move prayerfully, but we've got to do something. We've got to do something. Any great miracle that has ever happened has, has not just come as a result of prayer, but it's come as a result of someone being willing to take a step of faith. God doesn't just put miracles on you. He puts you in a position where you have to move towards them. Our T.D. Jakes say it like this. If you're in need of a table, you ask God, Lord, I need a table to eat off of. Do you think God's just going to rain down a table from the sky or is he going to put the wood in your living room that you can build a table out of? He said most time when God performs a miracle, he gives you the resources you need to put together that that you that you need. 
God did the miracle by providing the wood. Now you do the work and build the table, right? Praying with expectancy says, Lord, I'm going to pray, but then I'm going to move and do something in response to prayer. Let's, let's, let's pray. God, we love you and we thank you. We ask you, Lord, to help us each to pray with a sense of expectancy, just like Elijah did when he prayed for that rain. He knew it was coming, so seven times he sent his servant to look for that cloud. Lord, I pray that we would have that same kind of expectancy when we pray, knowing that you're going to move and we would keep acting in faith, Lord, knowing knowing that you hear us when we pray, just like you did Elijah. We love you and we thank you for it in your strong name. Amen. Bless you guys.